Hello there and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. After I had a short break last week, I'm back and I'm going to make this one short to get back into the groove. As you might imagine, I get a lot of questions about Octane stuff and I noticed a pattern. So most of the time, the answer to this question is either Ray Epsilon or Ray Switch. I definitely need to also make a video about the Ray Epsilon, but this video is about the Ray Switch. So let's go about this a bit methodically. I am not a big fan of tinkering around with unrealistic settings as excluding light sources from reflections, for example, or shadows from objects. But sometimes you find yourself in situations where stuff like this is necessary or some client asks you to do some impossible things that can't be achieved otherwise. In those situations, the ray switch is very handy. So while the whole introduction you have seen the impossible cube animation, why the impossible cube, you might ask? Well, uh, this one is very strange in terms of colors. So while you have the cylinder showing up blue, it's like a pinkish color inside of the refraction of the green cube. And then you have this mint color here that shows up in the reflection as a red color and so on. So even the blue color in the reflection gets orange and all those things don't make sense in a physical kind of way because of course, this should be blue throughout and the reflection of the minty object, of course, also should be the same color and not red. So even if you don't know about ray switching, you might have encountered some of those features inside of different octane areas. For example, the light here, if I click on a light tag, you can turn it off from diffuse, from specular, you can also decide for it to not cast shadows and you can also turn off and on the transparent emission. Also in the octane sky, if you duplicate that and set the sky to visible environment and tick that roll out, you can load in a different HGRI and decide if it's only showing up as a backplate or you want to have it in your reflections or even in your refractions. So the lighting is split between this one here making the lighting and then this one here doing all the other stuff that you've ticked or not. And those are basically options from the way switch that had made it into the interface. So let's delete that here and start rendering. And you can see that now our cube is looking correct. So the reflection and the refraction of the objects having the same color and looking as you would expect. So let's introduce the ray switch here by going over to the nodes and for example take the cylinder and make it show up in the refraction as a different color. So what you need to do is scroll down to get to the cyan bits here and in the cyan bits there's this ray switch. Obviously you can do that same thing with a tap and call ray switch. I just wanted to show you where it is located here in the list. So when you look at the ray switch, you can see that the ray switch switches the rays by category. So what does this mean? Octane classifies rays as different types. One is the camera ray, then there's the shadow ray, diffuse, reflection, refraction, and ambient occlusion. And the switch lets you switch dependent on the ray type. So let's demo this by bringing the switch inside of the stream here. And now you can see that we have the camera ray showing up as a blue color as we have this one here inside of the camera ray and all the others like the reflection, refraction and so on are showing up totally transparent. And this is because the ray switch here has an initial value that is set to one. So the refraction right now is totally transparent. So it shows up as non-absorption inside of the cube. Of course, what we could do is get the value here lower. So the cylinder inside of the cube gets darker like this. 
But if we are not satisfied with one value, we can use just another color. So let's duplicate that color, make it maybe a purple, and pipe it into the refraction. And now we have a purple cylinder showing up in the refraction. Note that still the reflection of it is white as we didn't drive anything other than the camera ray and the refraction with colors. So what you could do or what you should do if you don't want to leave them blank is fill in the rest of those slots that are not uh, going to change with the same color that you want the object to be. So now we see the blue cylinder everywhere except in the refraction where it becomes purple. So I hear you asking, this is all fine, but what's the purpose of this? The purpose is that it's very flexible. So you not only are able to use that inside of an absorption, of course, but everywhere else. So you can just go to the way switch here and pipe in, for example, into the opacity. And if you don't like the reflection of the blue cylinder here, you can make it disappear by going into the reflection and set it to zero. Now there's a leftover here, you can see here and here, but this is no reflection, this is the shadow. So you can also turn down the shadow to zero to get rid of the last bit. So now the blue cylinder is only showing up in all the other ray switches, but the reflection where it's turned to zero, so no reflection is happening. And as there are so many use cases, I follow this up with a couple of examples. Here we go. For example, a light flooded interior scene where the sunlight on the floor gives you some spill here and you want the scene to be rather neutral than the orange spill off the floor. No problem, you can just link up the texture to the ray switch and go through a color correction node and set this to the diffuse ray. So the diffuse indirect will have less saturation. And here you go, you have the same color in the floor while your light spill is greatly reduced. You have an area light with a spotlight distribution and want the area light to show up not only if you're inside of the cone of the distribution, no problem, just use a ray switch and connect every other ray than camera ray and connect it and voila, your light showing up while the behavior stays the same. You want a different texture showing up within your reflection, refraction and so on, no problem, just wire it up in the ray switch and voila, in this case you have another texture showing in the refraction. Nice. Architectural double-sided glassing looks really nice but taking up too much energy. Well, first of all, let's take the transmission to one and then, of course, if that's not enough, ray switch. Having enough of the realistic ways of rendering, try something more colorful and maybe make an NFT. It's Ray Switch. Having weird big borders around intersecting interfaces. Oh wait, no, that's Ray Epsilon. Okay, sorry about that. So I hope you like this a uh, bit different approach this time and learned something about the Ray Switch nodes and the situations in which you can use it. As promised, this is a short one. And as always, have a nice time, a good week and happy switching. Bye.